All right. Let's get started. Let's make sure everybody is crystal clear on the housekeeping. So you all have a present for me on Monday, and then I have a present for you on Wednesday, right? Because we celebrate on Wednesday. So let's be clear. You all know the drill with my exam reviews. So if you look on Blackboard, the exam review slides are there. Um, it, it's probably worthwhile to look at it because there's a nice summary of all the you know, fundamental equations uh, for, for tension members on that uh, exam review slide. So I would probably just take a look at it just for, for, for that purpose. Um, <coughs> you know how, how it goes. I spend about five minutes going through the review slides, and then I let you all ask whatever you want uh, about the exam. So uh, you want me to go through examples, homework, you want me to just talk about steel, I'll be happy to, just whatever you think is uh, appropriate. Uh, you can ask me what the question, the answer to number two is. I won't answer, but you can ask. Um, but yeah, anything I can't answer, I won't. Anything I can, I will. Um, so homework number three is due on Monday. Uh, I think just about everybody got my email, or uh, everybody got my email, but I think it applied to just about everybody. So I had a typo on my solution to problem two. Uh, on the net area calc, I forgot to put a two there. So that caused, like out of 48 people, that caused something like 44 of you to lose a point on homework number two. So what I did is I've awarded everybody who deserved the point, I added it on Blackboard. So if you got homework number two back, so for instance, if you got a 27 out of 30 on it and you check Blackboard and you have a 28 out of 30 on Blackboard, I just added it on Blackboard. I didn't go through and mark every single homework assignment. Um, now that, uh, I think I've I, I uploaded everybody. There was a few students that I had to check their homework in here today, and I've already done that, so I'll fix your homework uh, maybe sometime later today uh, if I have time. Uh, so don't worry, I've, I've got you marked. I, I won't forget. Um, anybody have any questions? Now, don't forget, uh, same sort of general rule applies on uh, homeworks. Do me a favor. Um, uh, I got a pile of homework still up there. I'm not saying you need to grab it right now, but do me a favor by sometime next week, actually get the homework because that could turn into a mess on my cart, especially if I have homework threes to give back and homework fours to give back and homework fives to give back and I got piles of homework everywhere. Let's not do that. So just do me a favor at some point. I uh, get your assignments. Okay, Engineering Career Day, I thought I'd mention this. You all should have gotten an email about this yesterday, uh, but Engineering Career Day uh, is on February 21st. Uh, if you're interested in volunteering, the event takes place over the morning. Uh, uh, I would talk to Natasha. Um, this is a good uh, networking opportunity because there's going to be a lot of potential employers there uh, and what have you. The purpose of the event is to try and uh, uh, encourage uh, like high school students to come to uh, not just Marshall but to really to, to get into uh, engineering um, but also even if you don't want to volunteer and we'd appreciate it if you would but even if you don't uh, SAME hosts a uh, youth social the night before uh, and that is specifically for uh, undergraduate students it's over at Fat Patties they're paying for food um, and there's gonna be like uh, USAC employees there's gonna be contractors probably a couple consultants so Networking and free food. Need I say more? Right? So, so please, you know, uh, if, if you're interested, that's going to be a, a, a good opportunity for you. Sound good? All right. Before I get into bolted connection land, this is our last lecture before you submit homework number three. Any questions on homework number three? Have you looked at homework number three? I hope you have. That's how big and to haven't looked at it. Any, any questions? Okay. It's due on Monday. And one thing about the, so, I, I mean, I don't mean to spring this on you, but I think you all probably were expecting this. Homework number three is due on Monday, and then you have the exam on Wednesday. So I was going to turn the solution on on Blackboard as soon as, uh, as, soon as you turn it in. That way you have the solution to review. Uh, for the exam. So I really don't know if I can accept, you know, super, super late, you know, submissions if uh, you have the solution, you know. So 
But you all, I think you all probably knew the drill. I mean, I, I, I've been doing this for the, the 17 classes that you had me for since you've been here at Marshall, right? Um, any questions? Some of y'all have had me quite a bit, so. All right, um, with that, let's get into the wonderful world of bolted connections. So let's just recap. Um, here, I'll, I'll start a couple slides behind. Let's just recap what we've reviewed up until now. So up until now, we've been looking at bearing type connections. So bearing type connections are ones where the load is transferred by the bolt bearing onto the plate. Okay. So um, we're not accounting for friction. We're not accounting for that slip capacity. So there are only two limit states that we need to assess uh, uh, when we're looking at a um, uh, a bearing type connection. We need to assess the limit state of bolt shear and the limit state of bolt bearing. In other words, how's the bolt going to fail and how's the plate going to fail? And I think we've, you know, run into the ground all the different ways that the bolt can fail. You know, is it going to shear through the, or uh, are, are the threads included in the shear plane? Uh, how many shear planes are included? You know, the type of bolts, the diameter of the bolts. I think we've gone through all those parameters. And as for bolt bearing, we've discussed those parameters, but we have yet to uh, uh, you know, do some calcs on them, and we're going to do that today. Um, but remember, bolt bearing capacity uh, is computed as follows, and everything that you have, everything in this nominal uh, resistance equation uh, is readily available, except for one thing, and that's L sub C. Okay, and so that's going to be kind of a, a new calc, um, but it's pretty easy. The formulas are pretty straightforward. If you have an edge bolt, it's the edge distance minus half a hole diameter, and if you have an interior bolt, uh, it's the bolt spacing minus an entire hole diameter. Remember, we're looking at the physical dimensions of the plate, so the hole diameter is the bolt diameter plus a sixteenth of an inch, not an eighth of an inch like it was in tension members. Um, now, that's all of our strength limit states associated with, uh, with bolt bearing, um, with, or with bearing type connections, bolt shear and bolt bearing. Um, there are also a series of bolt spacing requirements that need to be checked, uh, uh, minimum maximum bolt spacings, minimum and maximum edge distances. Remember the two reasons for these limits are to facilitate the construction process and the fabrication process, uh, and two, to prevent and limit corrosion. You know, the bolts get too far apart, water seeps in between the plates, that's corrosion, that's no good. So, so yes, that's why you have your maximum spacing and edge, uh, or spacing and edge distance requirements. Okay. Everybody good on that? So this was our example that we were analyzing. We were looking at a, a, a group, <coughs> a series of group A bolts with the threads excluded. Um, we have a one inch, uh, they're one inch diameter bolts. The steel is A36 across the board, so the plates have the same uh, uh, F sub U value. Um, and what we're trying to do is analyze the strength of the connection. And we started that problem last time, and this is about how far we got. We've got our bolt diameter, so we know our hole diameter is uh, plus a sixteenth of an inch, so we went ahead and included that. Let me close that up a bit. Um, we know it's A36 steel, so we know the F sub U is 58 KSI, and we did the bolt shear check. That one was easy. Okay, so bolt shear, we have uh, group A uh, X uh, bolts of one inch diameter. The bolts are in double shear, so go to table 7-1 and the capacity of a single bolt that's why, if you look, you see me write a little r, like phi sub little r in. I usually do that to say, okay, that's the capacity of a single bolt, and so the capacity of the whole connection is like the big r. So, um, so, so phi r in for each bolt is 80.1, so it's 80.1 kips per bolt, um, and there's six bolts in the connection. So the entire capacity of the connection, according to the limit state of block shear, or of, of bolt shear, sorry, not a block shear, but bolt shear, of bolt shear is 480.6 kips. Okay, everybody all right with that? All right. <coughs> and so last time, before we ended it, the thing that we, uh, that, that we uh, had, had looked at was bolt bearing. And so before I move on, the one question I really want to make sure everybody's clear on is how there are actually two different cases of bolt bearing. There's the uh, analysis of the plate in the middle looking at its bolt bearing capacity, and then there's the analysis of the splice plates. Now, the way that I uh, do the splice plate analysis is instead of analyzing each plate and multiplying it by two, I just analyze or, or multiply the thickness by two and just analyze it as if it was one single plate. So there's the load or the plates transferring the load this way, and then there's the plates that are transferring the load this way. 
And so we'll look at each of those uh, independently uh, in order to determine the capacity. Is everybody okay with that? All right, so let's, let's take case one, and I'm going to walk you through this. I think you'll find it's pretty straightforward. So we'll say bolt bearing case one. Remember, for this case, we have uh, S equals 3 inches. We have L sub E. I can, I can do better than that. We have L sub E is 2 and a half inches, and we have a thickness of 3 quarters of an inch. And also remember that F sub U is 58 KSI. Okay? <coughs> so... Let me show you how this works. Um, the first thing that we need to do is we need to compute our clear uh, edge distances. Now, our, our clear distances, sorry. Now, we have two clear distances that we're going to compute, a clear distance for the edge bolts and a clear distance for the interior bolts. So let's do, let's do that one at a time. So we have the clear distance for the edge bolts. And so the way that we're going to compute that is we're going to take the edge distance minus uh, half of a hole diameter. And so that's going to be uh, two and a half inches minus um, one half of what? What was the hole diameter? There we go. Here, I, I, I can do that. I know it's Friday, but I'm going to wake you up. So what does this come out to be? And at this point, because the values are getting kind of small, we can keep this in decimal format. We'll say three decimal places so that everybody's on the same page. Two point four seven. Did you get the half? Uh, yeah, like something like like nine six nine. Yeah. And then, does it, are we, are we, did we get seconds on this? I can't remember. Yeah. Okay. All right. And then LCI, this is S minus DH. So this is three inches minus one and one sixteenth, and that comes out to be what? Okay, it's one point something. One point, so yeah, something like, I think it's like three eight. All right, we'll, we'll just look at that. Okay, now, remember what these distances are, okay? I'm going to scroll up a little bit. Remember what these distances are. What we're talking about, so we're talking about the main plate, the one in the middle. So the edge distance is the distance from here to here, we're talking about that clear distance in between. And so what we would do is we take the edge distance and we subtract half a hole diameter. For the interior bolts, we're talking about here to here. That clear distance right there. So that's what we mean by clear distance, literally from edge to edge. And so that's the bolt spacing minus a half on one side and a half on the other. So just so everybody's clear on what we're doing. Okay. Now, here's the thing, though. If you look at the expression for, for bolt bearing, see, let me, let me go back to the slides. See, here's the equation for, for bolt bearing capacity, okay? But notice it just says L sub C, right? See, we have a different edge, or a different L sub C value for edge bolts than we do for interior bolts. So as a result, that means that we could have a different capacity for edge bolts as we do for interior bolts. So what does that mean? We're going to have to do this calculation twice. So what we'll have is a little r sub n for edge bolts. Then we'll have another one for interior bolts. So for edge bolts, we've got the following. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I do want, want you all to do something for me just off to the side. 
what is two times a bolt diameter? Just help me out. You'll see why I'm doing this here in a second. It's two, not the whole diameter, the bolt diameter. The bolt is one inch. Everybody with me on that? All right, you'll, you'll see why I'm doing that here in a second. I just wanted that off to the side. Okay, so the capacity of uh, a bolt and bearing is 1.2 times the thickness times F sub U times the minimum of what? It's L sub C and two times a bolt diameter. But in this case, it's going to be L sub C E. Okay? So help me out. Looking at these, what's the minimum? The L sub C E or two times the bolt diameter? The L sub C E. So what does that mean from a behavior standpoint? What's going to happen first? Is the bolt hole going to plastify or are we going to have bolt hole tear out? Anybody remember? It's going to tear out. Remember, if this one, this one's related to the bolt hole tear out, this one's related to the uh, bolt hole plastification, the ovalization. So that one's going to govern. So this is going to be 1.2 times the thickness of three quarters of an inch times 58 KSI times uh, 1.969. And so that equals what? And we'll say two decimal places just to do that. I probably wouldn't be that super exact if I was doing it in practice, but I like to have a little bit of specificity so that we all know that we're talking about the same numbers. 102.78. Okay. And so one of the things I want to, that I like to do is this, is 102.78. This is a little RN, okay? And so what I want to say is this. This is kips per bolt, okay? That's what those little RN values are. They're the kip per bolt, okay? So I like to indicate that accordingly, all right? And so RNI, the capacity of an interior bolt. Here, let me scroll down a bit. That's going to be the exact same thing except we're going to have a different L sub C value. So 1.2 TFU times the minimum of LCI and 2 times the bolt diameter. Okay, so 1.2, 3, point, uh, 3 quarters of an inch, 58 KSI, and 1.938. Oh, what happened here? Oh. What the? That disappeared on me. And so what does that come out to be? 101.16. 101 so the capacity of an interior bolt is slightly less for, the, for, this, uh, for this pattern. And the reason why is because the clear distance is different, OK? Now, it wasn't very extreme on this problem, but it really could be. Like if you had like a three inch bolt spacing and a one inch edge distance, yeah, that could get really different really quick, okay? So what we've got is the capacity of, an, of a single edge bolt and the capacity of a single interior bolt. What I ultimately want is the capacity of the entire connection. So what is Rn? Well, it's however many edge bolts we have and however many interior bolts we have and add them up. So let's scroll up a bit. So here's the connection. So you tell me, how many edge bolts do we have on this connection? Two. How many interior bolts do we have? Four. So in order to determine the, the nominal capacity, we're going to have two RNE plus four RNI. So 2 times 102.78 plus 4 times 101.16. And so that's going to equal what? 610.2. I have a second on that? <coughs> 
All right. Um, is that the capacity? What am I forgetting? I'm getting, forgetting my fee value. And so what is fee for, for bolt bearing? 0.75. So 0 0.75 times 610.2 kips is what? Four fifty seven point six five, so we'll say four fifty seven point seven kips. Would you all agree with that? So everybody good? Let me ask you this. So if you started loading this connection, what do you think is gonna happen first? How how is this connection gonna fail? It's going to tear out. Here is the capacity in bolt bearing. Scroll up a little bit. This was the capacity we got in bolt shear. This was 480, right? So its capacity in bolt bearing is less. If I pull on this connection, the bolt bearing capacity is what we're going to reach first. We're going to tear these bolts out before we shear them, okay? Make sense? So that's what governs the capacity of the section. Now, are there other limit states that we should address for this connection? Well, of course there are. There's gross section yielding, there's net section fracture, there's block shear. There's all sorts of different limit states that we could assess for this connection. Um, and you all know how to do that. You know how to do gross section yielding. You know how to do net section fracture. You know how to do block shear. So I'm not going to waste your time um, going through all of that on this example because you know how to do it. Um, but there is one other thing. Um, that we need to address that we could do uh, in-house, and that's this. Look at this. This is the word right here. This is the bolt bearing capacity for case one, okay? What about case two, right? We have a whole other series of plates, right? So don't worry, I'm not going to make you do all this again, even though you'd have to do it on a homework assignment. I'm not going to do it in class. See, bolt bearing for case two, what's different? Well, we have a different edge distance and a different thickness. So what was it? Our edge distance was two inches and our thickness was one inch. Was that right? Right? So we have S equals three inches. We have the edge distance is two inches. The thickness is one inch, bless you. And F sub U is 58 KSI. And so you would take these and compute this all over again. So you would go through this exercise again. Do an RNE, do an RNI. Two RNEs and four RNIs are going to give you the uh, nominal capacity of the section. Adjust it by uh, 0.75 to get fee RN. You know, it's going to be a new L sub C E, a new L sub C I. So just go through that process all over again, just different values. Um, now, I'm not going to make you do it. I will go ahead and tell you what the capacity is. It ends up being, sorry, uh, it ends up being something like 558 kips. I'll just go ahead and tell you. So it ends up not governing. But you don't know that until you go through the, the calculations uh, and check it. So if you're unsure about this, I would suggest that you take these values here, start, you know, start here, go down here, and see if you get 558. You should. So, so yeah. Does anybody have any questions on this? Everybody good? Now, we're not quite finished, though, because I do want to evaluate one thing, um, and that's the spacing requirements, the, the bolt layout requirements. All right, let me scroll this down a bit. Okay, <coughs> what do I mean by that? Well, 
Let's look at S min and S max and let's see what we can come up with. So help me out. What is our minimum bolt spacing for a bolted connection? What is it? Well, okay, now that's the preferred, but that's not the absolute minimum. What's the minimum? Two and two thirds. Okay, so it's two and two thirds of dB, of dB, not the whole diameter, the bolt diameter. So that is two and two thirds times one inch. So it's something like 2.67 inches. Okay, now what is S max? Somebody help me out. 14 times the thickness or 7 inches. So 14, so minimum. So it's the minimum of 14 times the thickness or 7 inches. Now, this raises an interesting question. What thickness do we use? Well, what I would do is this, okay? Bolt spacing requirements, bolt layout, bolt edge distance requirements, these are all completely independent of capacity, okay? Bolt layout requirements are a function of just looking at the connection and seeing, you know, what's going to govern, okay? And so what I really have going on on this connection is I have a center plate that's three quarters of an inch thick, and then I have two splice plates that are how thick? Half inch, okay? So I propose that for this check, we use the absolute thinnest plate in the connection. So I propose we use the half inch. So what's the minimum of 14 times a half an inch or seven inches? Well, that's a bit serendipitous. That's seven inches. So what this is saying is that our, our bolt spacing has to be in between 2.67 inches and seven inches. See, if we used a larger plate thickness, that range would get a, little, get a little bit larger. So to be conservative and to be accurate, use the thinnest plate possible so that you know you're evaluating the entire connection. So let me ask you this. Does our bolt spacing fall within this limit? Yeah, what is our bolt spacing? It's three inches, so we're good there. Good. Now what about edge distances? Okay. Let's look at L sub E minimum. What is L sub E minimum? How do we look that how do we find that? There is no formula for that, right? We have to look that up in the AISC seal construction manual that every single person in this class brought with them, right? See this? Watch this. Watch. This is the professor look. And then, then there's this. Watch. Hold on, hold on. Very bad. Everybody brought their AISC seal construction manual to class, right? What about, what about back here? Hold on. See, not, oh, there we go. All right, all right. <coughs> One and a quarter, okay? Now, help me out. What table did you find that from? See, here's the thing. When you go to the slides, see, I know everybody's like, where did you find that? And see, that's why I put this little, you know, summary two slides, and it says that minimum edge distances are in table J3.4 on page 16.1-132. See, I do that because I know that you're like, well, where did you find that? It was in the slides. 
That's a good question. I'm gonna I'm gonna refer to that here in a sec. Okay. Remind if I forget, remind me. From the center of the hole to the edge of the plate. Yes. That and that, because the reason why it's indicated that way is because if you were drilling, what do you need? Like you're gonna measure from the edge of the plate to where you're gonna drill, and you're gonna drill at the center of the hole. That, that's a great question. So. So what I'm, what I'm after right now is I want to make sure that everybody can find this value. Is everybody able to find this value? Everybody able to find it? Okay. All right. What about L sub E maximum? What's that? And so the same thickness is going to apply, so we're going to use the half inch. And so which one's it going to be? It's going to be the same. So it's going to be 6 inch. Do we meet these requirements? Yeah, we meet these requirements because our edge distances, so we have two different edge distances for this connection. We have an edge distance for the main plate and an edge distance for the splice plate. This one was two inches. This one was two and a half inches. So we know we're okay. That's a great, well, that's a great point. Yeah, I mean, if, if we were, yeah, you're actually right. Yeah, if, if we were looking at the main plate, we would look at, we would look at the three quarter. If we're looking at the splice plate, we're looking at the one half. You're, you're correct. Although in the end, it, it still really didn't matter. Um, but you're right, you're right. Any questions? Uh, uh, correct, water. Yeah, the, the, it, think. If you were bolting together plate A and plate B, but the bolt was all the way in here, your plates would sort of be like that, and so water would get in between them. So it's got to, there's got to be, it's got to be at least somewhat close to the edge so that you can ensure that that seal uh, has been made. Same thing with bolt spacing. So, everybody good? Now, um, Mr. Dial brought up an interesting point. Um, I want you to go to Table 7-1. That's where the bolt shear capacity is. Oh, I lost my little straight edge. Okay. So Table 7-1 is the available shear strength of bolts. Okay. Um, table 7-2 is the available tensile strength of bolts. I want you to turn the page. So Table 7-3, we're going to look at this later, is the slip capacity of bolts. And there's one for Group A bolts one for group B bolts, and if you turn the page, there's group C. So what's going on with table 7-4? Hmm. This one's kind of interesting. Okay. So table 7-4 is listing the available bearing and tear-out strength uh, uh, at bolt holes based on bolt spacing. And then there's another table that's listed based on edge distances. The The... And you could use this table if you want. I'm not saying that you can't. Um, the only problem with this table or, or something that ought to be mentioned is that this is based off of plate thickness, if you will. So you have to, it's reporting sort of per inch. So you have to, you have to adjust that. So let me show you how this works, just so everybody's aware. Let me scroll up a little bit. So we're looking at based on bolt spacing. So if we're looking based on bolt spacing, what that means is, is that we're looking at the interior bolts. Okay? Now what did we get? We got 101.16, right? Okay? So what is that if we multiply by phi? Like take this, multiply it by 0.75, and tell me what you get.
Say it again. 75.87. Okay. All right. So keep that in the back of your head. Now let's look this up in this table. So if you have a standard bolt hole, if you have three inch bolt spacing and you have 58 KSI steel and a one inch diameter bolt, what's the capacity listed? Ninety-seven point nine. Does everybody see that? But that's ninety-seven point nine kips per inch of thickness. So if the plate was one inch thick, that would be the capacity. But when we were looking at the main plate, it wasn't uh, uh, an inch thick. It was three quarters. So take that number and multiply it by three quarters and tell me what you get. You should get the same answer. You should get the same number. Did you get the same number? Okay. Let's pay attention. All right. Look at table 7-4. So we're at the top row, standard bolt holes. What's our bolt spacing on this problem? Three inches. We have 58 KSI. What's our bolt diameter? So that's 97.9, right? But that's assuming that the plate is one inch thick. The plate is actually three quarters of an inch thick. So take that number, multiply by three quarters, what do you get? Is that the same thing on, uh, as before? That's not this times 0.75? Hmm. That's weird. This is why I don't like using this table. Standard. We're using standard size holes. This is why I don't like using this, this table. So I'm gonna look into this. Yeah, I, I don't know what's going on because this isn't this isn't right. So or I'm missing something. I don't know. I don't know. I'll, I'll look at it later. I'll look at it later. We have to move on. This is why I, the other thing, there's another reason why I don't like using that table because you have to use the table, the next table for edge bolts. So you, you can't use a single table. And honestly, I just think this is a lot easier. So see what I mean? This is why I don't like using it. It's, it's more confusing. So, okay. All right. Other than that table, did, did that example make sense? So we understand how to compute, uh, hold on, hold on. We understand how to compute the capacity according to bolt shear. We understand how to compute the capacity according to bolt bearing. We understand how to evaluate uh, spacing and edge distance requirements, okay? That's great for analysis. What about design, okay? Well, bolted connection design uh, is pretty straightforward, okay? L look, it, it's pretty simple. If you have a single bolt in bolt shear and that bolt can withstand 50 kips, and the connection has 500 kips on it, how many bolts do you need? 10 bolts, right? So here's what you do. You determine the factored load, and what you do is you design your connection based off bolt shear. So you determine the factored load, and you determine the design capacity of a single bolt. And then you divide to get the total number of bolts. Then you lay out the connection according to spacing and edge distance requirements, and then once you've got it laid out, then you can check out bolt bearing. And if bolt bearing's good, you're done. If not, maybe change your bolt spacing or your edge distances around a bit. And there you go. And that's, that's it. I mean, there's really nothing else to say on bolted connection design. So much so that we have the following problem. We can probably just jump right into it. So what I have here is I have plate A connected to plate B. Before, before I, I, I go into the example, let me say something else about this, this, particular, um, this particular problem. Let me say this. Um, a lot of these bolted connection examples are looking at plate A connected to plate B. And so I'm sure some of you might be like, well, how is this going to change if I had a plate connected to a wide flange? Or uh, you know, a plate connected to a channel. How's this going to change? It's not. 
The only difference is, is that I'm not going to be able to just say it's a three-quarter inch plate. I'm going to have to go look up the thickness of the flange or the thickness of the web. But is it any different? N no, not, not really. It, it, it's still a uh, piece of steel connected to piece of steel. The only thing is, is that your thicknesses are a bit different. So <coughs> that's basically it. Um, so I'm going to connect plate A to plate B. I have a 12 inch by 7 eighths inch thick plate. It's a 3 quarter inch diameter bolt that's group B. So these are the, the, the more stout bolts uh, and the threads are excluded. Okay. We're going to say it's A572 grade 50 and one of the things I've, I've done on this problem is that it's a basically plate A and plate B are the same. So we're not going to have like different bolt bearing checks to make. The, the bolt bearing check for the plate this way and the bolt bearing check for the plate this way are completely identical. So I, I, I don't have to worry about that. Um, I've got a 115 kip dead load, uh, 160 kip live load that's already reduced. Uh, so we've already had live load reduction accounted for. Don't have to worry about all of that. And, um, and there you go. Sound good? That was easy. So here's our example. And, and I, I think you're going to find this is, like in terms of design, this is probably one of the easiest designs uh, that there is. Um, let's just get right into it. Let's start off with our factored load. We have a we have a dead load of 115 kips and a live load of 160 kips. So what do I do with that? All right, so what does that come out to be? 394. Do I have a second on that? All right, um, while we're in this stage, since we're, we're setting up the problem, we know that this is A572 grade 50. So what is F? Sub U. 65 KSI, and where'd you find that? All right. Okay. So, again, this is going to be pretty simple. So, let's look at bolt shear capacity. We have a group B X bolt. We have the diameter of a bolt is what? And we have, now help me out, is this single shear or double shear? This is single shear. So if that's the case, what is that? 27 point eight kips per bolt, right? Okay, so watch this. So we know that PU is 394 kips. We know that VRN for a single bolt is 27.8 kips per bolt. 
So how many bolts do we use? We just say 394 kips over 27.8 kips per bolt. And what does that equal? There we go. And for you math purists out there, this is going to seem like a weird question, but let's say for the sake of discussion that it was 16.17. Would you round up to 17? Okay, what's the problem with that, rounding up to 17? Well, yeah, I mean, see, 15, we can have a group of five by three. But if it's 17, what are we going to have, just a single row of 17 bolts? It, it's a prime number, right? So you, you, you could maybe have, like, a group and then one bolt by itself. You could do something like that. Honestly, I'd probably just keep it in a box or something, try and keep it grid-like. So, yeah, 15 bolts, we can do five by three, so... Probably, probably, unless, unless I was staggering it. And if I'm staggering it, then I might be able to come up with a staggered pattern that kind of makes sense. But usually, and let me say this from a practical setting, usually the only reason that you're going to try and stagger a connection is if you want to use the members as they are. You don't want to change your member design. Now you got a W10 by 49, you want to keep the W10 by 49, but you check the tensile capacity and it doesn't work, then you're going to stagger the connection. Okay? And if you stagger the connection, does it change bolt shear capacity? No. Does it change bolt bearing capacity? You bet. Because now, instead of being able to group, well, here's my edge bolts and here's my interior bolts, well, you're going to have edge bolts that have different capacities. So, you know, for instance, you might have a, a connection that looks like this, and you might have this. You know, something like that. Well, these bolts are going to have different edge capacities than these bolts. Am I going to make you do that? No, I'm not. Don't worry. I could be, like, really mean and just put this on the exam, you know, say, I lied. Deal with it. I, would, would I do that? Would I do that? Like, you're so close to the end. You know, this is steel design. This is a senior level course. Do you think I would do that near the end? Oh, you should have known that. <laughs> you should have known that. That's all I got, everybody. We're gonna, hey, everybody, we're going to finish this problem after the uh, review. So we actually aren't going to come back to this problem until next Friday. What are you going to do Monday? What are you going to come with? You're going to come with two things. Homework and questions on the exam. That's all I got, everybody. Y'all have a wonderful weekend.